Good morning. Ah, it works great. Excellent. We have a few, <clears throat> few more people who are still getting breakfast and coming in, but we'll go ahead and get started so we can keep things at least start on schedule, I think. So welcome back, all of you, to the AAAS Auditorium. <laughs> and welcome to those who are joining us online. <laughs> um, so it's been three years since the, the annual coalition meeting was held here. Uh, we're so excited to be able to welcome people back, welcome you all back to the auditorium, um, and, and to acknowledge how much has changed since then. Um, we all know the many changes in life <laughs> and professional life and science and human rights that have happened, specifically with the Science and Human Rights Coalition. Since we celebrated our 10th anniversary here in 2019, uh, the right to science has truly begun to emerge from its dormant state. In 2020 and 2021, when we all met exclusively online, uh, human rights experts across multiple areas of concern began to cite the right to science in their work um, in relation to a number of different human rights uh, issues that relate to the right to science. Toxics in the environment as they relate to human rights, disinformation about the pandemic, the rights of indigenous peoples, the rights of women, in relation to the right to science, and also in response to the violent attacks on health workers across the world that are themselves violations of the rights of those individuals who are part of the scientific community, and at the same time, the rights of their patients to access their rights to health and the right to the benefits of science. What we're seeing happen is in, the, in those years is that the right to science, which has in large part been articulated through work of this coalition, through work of a small group of human rights experts and practitioners and communities and NGOs, that work has provided a language and a framework. It's provided the words to describe injustices around the world in a way that helps us identify patterns and systems that are needed for justice. So I want to take a moment to appreciate and applaud the organizations that are members of the uh, and the individuals who are members of the Science and Human Rights Coalition for their role in that. Obviously, it's not just us, but we brought the voice of the scientific community to those discussions as the right to science has been articulated. Um, the vision, the intellectual contributions, and advocacy have all been so important to moving us from discussions about what the right to science is to actually applying it in specific uh, real-world circumstances to improve the way that we uh, address those human rights concerns. Uh, I want to especially thank Jessica Windham uh, for leading the coalition through that and, uh, and leading AAAS's work around the, the human right to science. It's a privilege to take on my role as coalition coordinator now on such a solid foundation. And so here we are. For the next three days, we will explore how we can apply the ideals and principles behind the right of everyone to enjoy the benefits of scientific progress and its applications. Conference session topics that have been organized from the scientific community, scientific membership organizations, individuals, NGOs who are active in this space uh, include applying the right to science to inform scientific publishing decisions in the context of Russia's invasion of Kyiv. The centrality of the right to science in a new World Health Organization instrument against pandemics. Publicly engaged science and public interest science as essential to achieving the right to science and other human rights. Improving science communication to better inform policymakers and the media who are reporting on human rights concerns. And leading in the fight against abuses of surveillance technologies. That last one, 
leads into another theme that runs through many of the conference sessions. Fully realizing the right to science requires public trust in science. Trust, in turn, requires honesty, empathy, and action. Repeated, consistent action. It requires that we acknowledge past wounds and take action to heal them. And so I'm grateful to the organizers of the sessions in which we'll work together to acknowledge the past and co-create a better future. These include sessions on the need for a Bill of Rights to prevent harmful applications of artificial intelligence, mindful of the ways that emerging technologies have historically enabled systemic discrimination, the role of human rights in inclusive science education, recognizing that STEM education and careers have not been accessible to everyone. New approaches to data science for documenting LGBT, BQ, sorry, LGBTQ plus <laughs> rights violations um, in Mexico, which has uh, incredible information that we can learn for other circumstances as well. Science engagement with people of faith and engaging youth in civic, civic science to address environmental injustice. And then that's the topic of youth. I'm excited that the SciTech and Human Rights Future Gen Scholars are part of this conference. Uh, this launched while we were exclusively online. We're now in our second year, and there are five scholars all together. I'm looking forward to meeting the new cohort during the next three days, here and online. The future gen scholars from the first year are going to share their projects, which were incredibly impressive. And we have a lot to learn from them and from each other over the next three days.